Welcome to Aurobindo Pharma Q1 FY25 earnings call. Please note that all participants line will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the opening remarks. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to management for opening remarks. Thank you and over to you sir. Thank you Vandit. Good morning and a warm welcome to our first quarter FY25 earnings call. I am Srinivas Rangge from the Investor Relations team. We hope you have received the Q1 FI25 financials and the press release that was sent out on Saturday. These are also available on our website. I would now like to introduce my senior management team on the call with us today, represented by Dr. Satkarni Makapati, CEO of Arbindo Biosimilars, Vaccines and Peptide Businesses and Director Arbindo Pharma Limited. Mr. Yugandar Puwala, CEO of UGA Pharma Specialities Limited. Mr. Swami Ayer, CEO Arbindo Pharma USA. Mr. V. Murli Dharan, CEO Europe Formulations Business and Mr. S. Subramanian, CFO. We will begin the call with the summary highlights from the management followed by an interactive Q&A session. Please note that some of the matters we will discuss today are forward-looking, including and without limitations statements relating to the implementation of strategic actions and other affirmations on our future business, business development and commercial performance. While these forward-looking statements exemplify our judgment and future expectations concerning the development of our business, a number of risks, uncertainties and other important factors may cause actual developments and results to vary materially from our expectations. Arbindo Pharma undertakes no obligation to publicly revise any forward-looking statements to reflect in future events or circumstances. With that, I will hand over the call to Mr. S. Subramanian for the highlights. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Srinivas. Good morning, all, and a warm welcome to our Q1 FY25 earnings call. Before we get into the details of our Q1 performance, I would like to state that we have published our second integrated annual report for FY24, which include details of our progress so far in terms of our business and financial performance and also touches upon our strategic pillars and growth levers. I am also glad to share that we will be completing first ever buyback of rupees 750 crores in August 24 at a price of 1460. The cash outflow for the company is expected to be around 935 crores against the FY dividend of approximately rupees 264 crores and will provide tax efficient return to our shareholders. Now coming to our F Q1 FY25 performance, I am delighted to state that with our quarterly performance reflecting in our top year-on-year -year growth of 10% amounting to rupees 7,567 7, crores. This growth is seen across market driven by new product launches, market share gains, expansion into new geographies and stable price. Our Q4 FY24 base has been higher due to accounting of Q2 and Q3 FY23-24 income of approximately US dollar 20 million from Indonesian operation. Excluding the above additional revenue, the quarter on growth was higher at 2%. US recorded revenues of US dollar 426 million during the current quarter marginally impacted by seasonality. Europe market demonstrated a strong performance and has achieved a revenue of Euro 221 million and is on track to achieve Euro 880 million plus for FY25. Further, overall growth market performance has been good during the quarter. Our EBITDA margin remained at 21.4% and is aligned with our expectation. EBITDA margins are supported by stable raw material prices, operating leverage due to incremental plant utilization. This was partially offset by higher OPEX from newly commercialized plants, including PENGI, higher SGNJ expenses on account of few non-recurring expenses, including remediation and associated production delays that effectively reduce the EBITDA and PBT by more than 100 crores. This is likely to come down significantly further in the future quarters. This coupled with the PENGI ramp up is expected to further support the EBITDA margins in the, in the upcoming quarter. At a full year level, we are confident of achieving our overall internal EBITDA margin target of around 21 to 22% as mentioned during the last earnings call. 
our net profit for the quarter increased by 61% year on year to rupees 919 crore now let me take you through the business wise highlights for the quarter in terms of the business breakdown formulation business excluding puerto rico in q1 fy25 witnessed a growth of 15% year on year to rupees 6475 crore and contributed around 86% of the total revenue the revenues are mainly supported by growth across markets of the US, Europe and growth markets. For the quarter, APA business contributed around 14% and revenue increased by 6% year on year to rupees 1092 crores. The growth in the APA business is mainly driven by higher volumes on account of improved asset utilization. During the quarter, US formulation grew by 12% year on year and recorded a revenue of $426 million. The growth was mainly driven by volume gain, stable demand, and new product launches, while on an overall basis, price erosion remained neutral. Due to the off-season, Q on Q revenues dropped slightly. During the quarter, we filed eight ANDAs, received final support for 10 ANDAs, and launched 10 products. Few of our key approvals in the recent quarters, including Momotizone, Isotretion, and Extra DL inserts, etc., will be reflected in the coming quarter. Revenue from the overall generics in USA increased by 12% year on year to US dollar 277 million, driven by new launches. Revenue from the injectable and specialty business in the US increased by 12% year on year to US dollar 102 million. The total injectable specialty sales globally increased by 16% year on year and showed $141 million. We have a total of 224 specialty and injectable ANDA filings as on 30th June and out of which 170 are final approval and the remaining 54 are awaiting final approval. The company has on 30th June as 838 ANDAs filed with the US FDA on a cumulative basis, out of which 668 are final approval and 26 have tentative approval. 144 ANDAs are under review. For the quarter, European formulation clocked a revenue of 1,982 crores an increase of 8% year on year. In constant currency terms, European revenue was Euro 221 million against Euro 205 million of last year Q1. For the quarter, growth market revenue increased by 49% year on year to 709 crores. In US dollar terms, the revenue grew at 85 US dollars in Q1 FY25. The increase was mainly driven by sales across markets and new geographies. For the quarter, ERV formulation business revenue increased by 14% year on year to rupees 229 crores or US dollar 27 million. This was supported by pickup in volume partially offset by price erosion to some extent. Now going to other highlights, the raw material costs continue to be at the benign levels and are in line with the previous quarter, supporting our gross margins, which stood at 59.4 against 53.9 of the previous year. In absolute terms, gross contribution was 4,494 crores. R&D expenditure for the quarter stood at 339 crores, which is 4.5% of the revenue. Net capex for the quarter was is around $74 million. The average USD INR exchange rate is 83.41 uh, against 83.04 in Q4. The average finance cost is around 6.5. The business has a net cash inflow of $89 during the quarter. As a result of the net cash position, including investments at the end of June 2024, improved significantly to $101 million. The gross debt stood at $833 million. We expect to continue our growth trajectory backed by volume gains, new product launches, and stable pricing. We are on track with respect to PNG scale, large scale commercialization and are hopeful to ramp up significantly from October 24. With expected volume pickup in the U.S. markets and ramping up of newly commercialized plants, benefits are expected to accrue to the top and bottom line in the coming quarter. We expect the current pricing scenario in the U.S. market to continue. European growth markets are expected to continue the growth momentum. We are confident of achieving our internal EBITDA target margin of 21-22 for the year FY24. Our China plant is expected to be commercialized from Q3 FY25 and the ramp up is expected from Q4 FY25. With our focused and strategic investments in R&D, we continue to develop strong product pipeline. Our biosimilars and complex products progressing 
the clinical trials are advancing. Dr. Satkani, a CEO, will elaborate on this. This is all from my end. Now, our business leaders will give more clarity on any specific aspects in our Q&A session. We are happy to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may raise your hand from the participant tab on the screen. Participants are requested to use headphones or earphone while asking the question. Participants are requested to refrain themselves with two questions. The first question is from Kunal Damesh. Hey, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on good side of numbers. Uh, one for Subhu, sir, on the EBITDA margin guidance of 21 to 22 percent, uh, since adjusted for some of the one-off that you highlighted, uh, this quarter we would be at roughly 22.7 percent. And uh, we expect, uh, we also said that this is kind of, you know, seasonally slightly muted quarter from the U.S. perspective. Uh, also, we have baked in all the PNG related commercialization expense. So shouldn't the run rate from year on uh, should improve? And, uh, uh, you know, is there any possibility of raising the EBITDA margin guidance at this point? Kunal, you are absolutely right. But if you recollect in the last earnings call, I said very clearly we will revisit the EBITDA guidance in the earnings call of now, but that is the second quarter call. We will be looking into that and then reply accordingly. Yes, sir. And uh, in terms of PNG plant cost, uh, we have baked in for the full three months in this quarter? Yeah, I think the three months we didn't have much uh, sales at all. Because uh, because of the various reasons in the PNG plan, because the equipments are with ready for the mechanical integration and we have synchronized the power and boiler, we lined up all the utilities together and uh, we are encountering teething problem in the last, we encountered teething problems in the last quarter when we are trying to scale it up, mainly due to the different operating environment compared to the some of the foreign countries. So we are expected to do around uh, uh, approximately around 20 batches this month, followed by another 30 batches in the next month. If this two goes well, I think we will more or less be able to ramp up in a significant manner starting October. Sure, sir. But my question was more on the operating expenses side. Is it already baked into our PNL? Uh, yes, it has been already. Side? No, it has everything got into the PNL. Sure. And depreciation of uh, 400 crore plus also reflects that the plant includes depreciation. all the plant depreciation, everything. Sure, sir. Thank you. And uh, one for Satkarni, sir. If you can provide any incremental updates on our biologic uh, slash biosimilar business over quarter four, it would help. Um, good morning, Kunal. So um, with our biosimilars initiative, um, we are making the intended and steady progress um, with our clinical um, trials as well as our uh, review of our filings. Our pipeline now extends up to 2032 and I'm reasonably convinced about the progress we are making. Uh, with the first wave of biosimilars, um, I'm pleased to state that um, we have achieved an important milestone in May of completing recruitment of all patients as part of our denosumab trial in European sites. The clinical study closure will be in June next year, and we will be on track to filing this product with both European Medicines Agency and the FDA in the second quarter of the next year. Now, as you guys know, um, denosumab is my first foray into immunology segment. Um, likewise, um, an important product of ours is the biosimilar to Omalizumab, which I have been continuously updating in this earnings calls. Um, the product fits well into our dermatology portfolio with its um, use in chronic spontaneous urticaria. 
Also with the treatment for accidental food allergies now approved for this product in the US, we are confident of the broader scope of treatment that omalizumab can offer across uh, respiratory asthma, accidental food allergies, and chronic spontaneous urticaria. We have completed a successful phase one study in Australia in healthy volunteers for this product. This I have updated about. Um, the product is now being studied in a large phase three uh, clinical trial comprising of more than 600 chronic urticaria subjects um, in Europe. Uh, separately, a small study also is being conducted in respiratory asthma patients in India. So the Indian clinical study, uh, to give you guidance, will be completed by the end of this year, allowing the product to be filed in India and certain emerging markets by Q3, Q4. The large European study um, will be completed by the mid next year, and we hope to file the product in Q3 next fiscal with EMA and the FDA. So with both these immunology assets, um, which is a departure from the um, oncology assets that we are already in. Um, we are hoping to file both these products with EMA and FDA next year. Then as you know, there are two more products of ours in phase three clinical studies and they're progressing okay. Uh, the pace of recruitment could have been better with our ophthalmic product, but uh, that's the nature of uh, the ophthalmic trials. It's going pretty slow, but I'm confident of completing the trial for the ophthalmic product in 26. Uh, but the oncology product, we have completed about 80% of the recruitment, and I hope to complete the recruitment in Europe um, by the end of this year for this product, and also probably position this for filing end next year. Now, with respect to our current product filings that are with EMA, they are going through the review process. Um, I expect us to be able to meet the requirements within the clock stop period that we are in right now. Um, and hopefully, in two quarters time, we will be able to uh, see these approvals uh, starting to trickle in for these three products one after the other, um, provided there are no regulatory uncertainties. Um, our Trastuzumab US filing that I told um, in the last quarter in the earnings call that we'll be filing this quarter slightly got delayed by a month. Uh, we are still on track to filing it and I hope to file it in the next four to eight weeks with FDA. I have completed a type four meeting with the FDA. So the decks are now fully cleared uh, from the US FDA based on the type 4 meeting to file trastuzumab with the US FDA. So in all, um, I think we are progressing well. Um, our tocilizumab biosimilar, which is another immunology asset, which is catering only to India and emerging markets, we have completed a phase 3 clinical trial in India. And I hope to file this product in the next 3 to 4 months time. But this is uh, uh, India and emerging market product, product only. So in the nutshell, uh, we are reasonably convinced about um, how our biosimilars um, is shaping up and um, I think our products will start to reach the intended markets from next year onwards. Sure, sir. Thank you. And uh, Abhinu, if you can quickly also update on the biologics business, uh, Abhinu, uh, where are we in the process of putting the 30,000 uh, liter capacity, etc.? Um, as you know, in the last earnings call, I have talked about uh, us being optimistic about um, closing the deal with uh, uh, MSD Singapore and Titan. Um, and after three days of the earnings call, we have signed out on the dotted line. Now we have entered into a definitive agreement with MSD. And we have one product schedule as well with them. The definitive agreement means that um, the civil works of the facility have now gathered pace. And um, I hope to complete the project by 2026, um, which allows the engineering batches to be, uh, or water runs to be conducted. From 2027 onwards, I expect the stockpiling process to begin in for this uh, product and the revenues to trickle in. Um, so the facility is, is uh, progressing well. I'm, I'm reasonably confident of um, uh, executing the project on time in 2026 for the engineering batches uh, to be taken within the, uh, within the facility. So I don't see any showstoppers there. The, the thing is progressing well. Uh, um, uh, Kunal, if that answers your question. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, uh... 
good luck and uh, i'll have more question i'll join that thank you thank you thank you Requ requesting everyone to refrain themselves with two questions please the next question is from amay chalke yeah hello am i audible yes you are okay thank you so much for, for giving me the opportunity to ask a question and congrats uh, to the management and good set of numbers first question i have uh, is it uh, uh, possible for management to guide uh, how the revenue mill sales have moved from quarter 4 to quarter 1 no <clears throat> Uh, we are not uh, specifically talking about Revlimid as a separate sales segment, but our run rate continues to be in a similar way when we launch the product, and we expect to continue in a similar way. Sure. I don't want a quantification, but qualitatively, is it possible to guide or? Qualitatively, at this point of time, yes, the pricing remains constant. Uh, we don't see any decline. And uh, we are trying to, as as best as possible, to uh, schedule it in such a way that, like, every quarter we have a decent set of numbers. Except for one or two quarters, we expect the similar run rate to continue. Sure. And should we uh, uh, assume that um, this year uh, uh, we should book higher sales compared to last year, or it should be similar? Uh, it will be like 10 or 15 percent here and there, but it will be similar. Got, got. Second question I have is uh, on the uh, uh, Europe and China uh, 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 revenue potential, considering both China plant and Vizac plant are being operational in FY25. So if you can give us some outlook on both the job. Thank you so much. You want to China and hello? Vizag. I think he's talking about yeah. the UGI Vizag. Yeah, that UGI Vizag. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. let me just talk about the UGI Vizag, then probably Subhu, you can take care of China. Okay. Uh, UGI uh, Vizag plant, uh, it is uh, up and running. Uh, we started capitalizing the plant uh, last quarter itself. And our European audit is done and uh, we will be hopefully starting filings from next quarter uh, because we are waiting for the GMP certificate to come from European authorities. Once we receive the GMP certificate, we will start filing products for the Europe. And our US filings are also on track and hopefully like we should do around three to four filings this year. Uh, so I expect revenues to start uh, from FI26 onwards. Yeah. So in terms of the China, uh, we are planning to start uh, a small volume in the month of November, December, and expected to ramp it up in the period between January to March quarter of last next year. And uh, the full-fledged volumes will start going only in the next fiscal year. So, it, it, uh, in fact, uh, because of this, uh, also we are trying to do some uh, filings for China as well as for US also we are trying to do that. So, all this will take the China potential, I mean, China revenue potential up in the coming years. This year we'll see only a small little volume and value. If I may add Subhu, something to what you said, um, in China, we have also shipped the first commercial product for BFS through our JV partner. So we, as you know, we have a JV there. So that is uh, something I just wanted to add. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from Neha Mankuria. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, Yogendra, my first question is on the uh, U.S. business. Uh, I thought we were supposed to see improvement in the U.S. business, uh, you know, with the resumption of the facility in the quarter. Uh, could you give us some color on, uh, you know, what's happening, uh, you know, to that? Should we expect uh, the improvement in the injectable business to be a little more uh, slower versus our initial expectation? 
Um, and just an extension to that question, we've seen another facility get an OAI for the injectable business. Um, you know, how are you thinking about, um, you know, compliance for the injectable business, uh, given that's a, you know, key for our uh, growth momentum in that, uh, in UTR? Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Neha. Uh, yes, you're right. In fact, uh, we thought uh, uh, last year, Q4, uh, we have taken the hit, but uh, because we wanted to be robust enough in terms of our remediation action. So it, it continued in Q1 as well. So our overall manufacturing was not to the fullest extent what it used to be. So Q4 and Q1, two quarters, I have taken the hit in terms of other remediation actions for the UGR3 uh, plant. Uh, so I'm cautiously optimistic that from next this quarter onwards, that is Q2 of FI25 onwards, our regular injectable business uh, should move up. I'm quite confident of that. Uh, coming to the second plant, which is our Bivadi plant near Delhi, uh, which got a OI, uh, we, we are working with FDA, and I'm confident that that can be resolved. That's a lesser evil than the UGR3. And uh, we feel like uh, whatever uh, uh, perceived uh, issues what uh, FDA has, in uh, next one, two months, we should be in a position to clear that. Uh, so I'm, as I said, like, I'm cautiously optimistic at this point of time of uh, resolving the FDA-related issues at the same time, uh, the sales momentum going up from Q2 onwards. And uh, does that make us confident to be able to gain the lost market share, uh, you know, for these injectable products? Because I can see that we have lost market share in some of the products uh, in the injectable side. I think at this point of time, what I, the way I see it is I don't think we have lost too much of market share on any of the molecules. It is mainly the supply constraints what we created on ourselves. And that is what has uh, taken a bit of a beating in terms of Q4 and Q1. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why once we start ramping up and which is well, we are already on the way, uh, I'm sure like we will gain the sales. We haven't lost too much of market share in any of the molecules. Uh, got it. Uh, and my second question is on Europe, uh, you know, a particularly strong quarter. I, I know, um, you know, Sabusa mentioned in his opening remarks that this will be north of 880 million for the full year. Could you give us some color, you know, the reason for the step up uh, in the quarter and why we believe this will be sustainable going forward? Murli? Murli? Yeah. Uh, good morning, Neha, and good morning, everyone. Murli here. I'm happy to take this question. Yes, Europe has been a contributor, silent contributor to the global revenue of Arbindo in the region of 25%. And, of course, we are having certain plans for new launches. And if you take the Q1 performance and on a straight line basis alone, we'll be touching 880, but also we have a couple of major launches coming up during the year. So we are quite confident and bullish that we'll be able to go northwards of 850 million towards 880, 900. Thank you. Understood. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the Myanti Gerai. Hi, uh, good morning and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on uh, remediation related costs. So uh, in your op opening remark, you mentioned there were some uh, additional costs which you uh, incurred in first quarter due to this remediation charge, etc. So uh, uh, can you quantify that and how much of that could be uh, seen in this uh, current quarter, second quarter also? Tamiyanti, uh, we have in Q1, we have spent around $9, nine million uh, against the remediation cost of UGR3. And we expect Q2 to be only a very fraction of that $9 million. I think hopefully like it will be around $2 million. And we have completed all the remediation. And uh, we don't expect any, any more, anything more than what we have already spent. So like Q1, yes, it is $9 million plus. And Q2 would be around uh, 2 million plus. That's that's what is our expectation. 
Okay, so majority done, and now maybe a uh, few related to bivadi Bhiwa- plant, which you Bhiwadi might have. Like, bivadi, like we have, uh, we don't need any remediation there. Uh, it is only clarification. So, like, it is going to be more about clarifications. Of this, absolutely, there is no remediation uh, in uh, bivadi. Uh, it is only uh, UGA three where the remediation was required, and uh, we have. Uh, to our best of our effort we have done that particular piece and uh, that's over okay and you just mentioned uh, 2q onwards you expect uh, the generic injectable sales to uh, move up and then maybe you will back to the uh, pre disruption uh, stages that's right and you maintain your uh, guidance for uh, global speciality uh, like ugs sales uh, which you had given some time back yeah in fact uh, for this year uh, i have already guided that, that like we will do around 600 million plus uh, i think we still are um, optimistic about touching the 600 million okay and uh, my second question is on uh, your Ind- indonesia operation so you uh, mentioned 20 million sales sort of sales you have booked so what kind of uh, ramp up you see in that market like uh, like are you like optimistic uh, about ramping up this uh, significantly no i mean the what i was uh, mentioning here in the q4 we have accounted the q1 and q2 sale because q3 sale because we did the closing sometime by december 20th or something so the entire thing the net economic power net economic benefit has flown into the quarter four that is the reason why it has come there otherwise we have been traditionally doing around 8 million per quarter and we will continue to do that at least for the year we are also thinking how to increase the overall sales and ramp it up because this is the existing business so okay. now the challenge is how to increase it how to ramp it up to the next level which we are working on Okay, sir. That's clear. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Shyam Srinivas. Good morning. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, just the first one again on the European business. So you talked about a eight fifty million euro for the full year kind of fund rate. Uh, so just want to understand how is the underlying profitability of this business now tracking. Have we moved past that double digit into mid teens in terms of the margin profile? I think, Sham, in terms of the Euro business, uh, I think they have been doing it extremely well in the last two, two, three quarters. They have been gradually increasing their overall revenue, overall margins, and I think the margins have already moved to nearly mid teens level. And uh, with the way Morley has communicated, and this is expected to be sustained, if not improved. Well said, Dasibu. I agree with you. And, yeah. So, Murli said, just in terms of the integration, where we have tried to move to some of our local plants, uh, how far are we on the journey, and how how much more can be done incrementally uh, for us uh, integration for the European business? When you talk of local plant uh, in Europe, we have only the plant at uh, Genesis, Portugal. But if you are referring to the expanded facilities in india the unit 15 right. has undergone undergone expansion and uh, which is uh, uh, you know clearly helping us in uh, feeding the markets and uh, despite q1 being uh, 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 being months which is still impacted by red sea issues the uh, uh, production and dispatches from india has really helped us in time to market uh, being achieved so we are doing fine and when china plant starts feeding us all the more we will be able to supply uh, clearly to the market better that's helpful just quickly on the second question um, if i were to look at the penji plant uh, you know uh, have has all the capex now done so sir in terms of what capex we had to do and in terms of the ramp up for this particular business you talked about cost being there uh when are the likelihood uh, of the revenue starting to kick in uh, for for this plant uh, relating to the capex uh, shrinivas 
we are expected we have more or less incurred around 95% of the capex any 5% is depending upon what is the requirement while we are ramping up what are all the new requirement coming that is what we will do so more or less the capex is over the second question is as i we didn't have any revenue flown any significant revenue flown last quarter this quarter we are planning to do good no, good set of uh, batches as a process of uh, ramping up and which is expected to give uh, some revenue during this quarter but next quarter onwards one these two months are very critical august september once we achieve that next quarter we'll have we'll be going towards 80% of the ramp up uh, we are working towards that so we will be able to tell better in a better uh, we'll be able to give better clarity during the second quarter earnings call understood thank you and all the best but uh, i just want to add uh, shyam yeah uh, sure. we have taken some good number of uh, operating expenses because we didn't have the sales during the quarter and once the ramp up etc comes and uh, not only it helps in overall growth of the company increasing the ebitda margin the existing ramp up uh, operation expenses cost which we have incurred during the period of stabilization will not be there understood thank you thank you thank you the next question is from me now um good morning good evening a uh, couple of questions on uh, us products um there was this product uh, generic m plus uh, which you had launched can't hear you bino hi bino you know, your voice is little uh, less can you please hello uh, is this better no still the same uh, it's very low um hello can you hear me now it's a little better uh so sir can we Yeah, yeah, go ahead and ask the question. Yeah. I think, like, oh, let's see. yeah. Okay, okay. First question regarding uh, this product, generic M Flasa, uh, which we had launched in the US a few months back. Uh, how is it doing? Are we only the player in the market still? That is the Flasa coat. The uh, Flasa. Yeah. Tommy. Yeah. I'm coming to that. Yeah, Deplacy Coat. Uh, yes, we have launched this product. At this point, I think we are the only player. Okay, and do you? That is for the expect- tablets. Okay, and do you expect uh, that situation to continue for some time? <laughs> we can't predict that, but uh, um, you know, we we have strength in this product, so we think that we can continue to do well. Okay. um second there's lifitogras of palmix solution for which you have an approval already uh, is that a product we can expect in next 12 to 18 months or is it far away no i i couldn't uh, hear what you're saying it's actually like it's quite far away because we have Lif- lifitogras yeah we know uh, this is lifitogras is not going to be any time soon we have the final approval but we also have a settlement with the innovator based on that i can tell you that it is not a 12 to 18 months period product understood and um, finally on uh, mira background uh, where there is some litigation going on some people have launched uh, do you have plans to launch near term no we know you have raised this question at least twice in the past and we responded to you we have a settlement in place so whatever the two company which have launched have launched i understand at risk uh, there is a case that's ongoing and the, the hearing is expected the final hearing is expected sometime in october or end of this year we'll have to watch but uh, all that i want to tell you is that we have an uh, settlement based on the settlement we cannot launch now got it uh, one final question on mst if i can push it um, the the deal uh, would it be for manufacturing of products also for the us and european markets or would it be more for the emerging markets i mean um the right now the markets are still under discussion um but it will be a majority of the markets um with probably um europe also coming in but um owing to the confidentiality nature of the discussions that are unfolding between uh, my team and the msd um i would not be able to provide uh, any more update on this now but as and when 
um, things get more clear, um, I can provide you an update. Understood. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Jigar Walia. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is now with this uh, unit three classification also kind of getting out of the way things getting resolved. You uh, are the board probably planning to go back to the proposed uh, spin-off or IPO listing for UJ? So, Mr. Jigar, we have uh, last year, I think if I'm right, in the month of August, the board has uh, uh, decided to evaluate, explore various options. And we put it on hold subsequently because the inspection for the UGR business has started all over the, all the units have started, uh, got the inspector. So now that inspections are over, we can revisit it. And uh, some of the bankers are also approaching us. So we have to decide it. But as and when your firm decision taken and uh, we are going to implement, we will certainly inform the market as per the compliance. Sir. Great, sir. So one question is on the margin. You mentioned about 100 crores one of this quarter, which uh, gradually will uh, reduce with the operating scale and the business ramp up. But, uh, and uh, is it right that, uh, but as the business scales up, it will take a while. I mean, it will take its time to come to the company level margin. So overall, we maintain at 21, 22, while in absolute terms, the margin is definitely ramp up. Mr. Jigar, uh, my colleague, Mr. Yugandar has uh, clearly articulated that we had a ramping up co remediation cost of around 9 million plus, which is expected to come down to 2 million this quarter. That itself is clearly shows that we are going to cut it down during the quarter. Absolutely. So the absolute uh, EBITDA is, will be more reflective and as the more size reflective. of the business. Yes, more yes. reflective. At least this OPEX is will not be there. Understood. Uh, so last question. Uh, uh, is uh, uh, you know, with this board change and now uh, the new chairman, etc. Is there anything uh, different on the board meetings or other things? Uh, no. In terms of no, we have been conducting the board meeting with the highest standards always. And with the new board chairman comes, he is bringing his own set of ideas and uh, things and which we are implementing. And we are also strengthened the board by having one more executive, I mean, one more non, I mean, one more independent director by name Dr. Uh, Deepali Pan and also Mr. Satkan, Dr. Satkani also joined the board to strengthen on the R&D side and the science side. So board is uh, now really a lot of new things are happening in the board meetings. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from Ankush Mahajan. So, good morning, sir. So, my question is related to the injectables. Uh, if I just uh, uh, taking run rate of the G development, then the uh, uh, other business in the injectables has uh, uh, shown is either is flats are showing some declining. Uh, the reason that you have explained also, but I just try to understand what was uh, how is the price erosion in the base season? Uh, how is the price erosion in the injectables? If I deducted the G development part. The no, price suggestion is low single digits. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question. The next question is from Kunal Damesh. Thank you for the opportunity again, sir. Uh, suppose on the uh, effective tax rate uh, this quarter, we have hit around 30%. Uh, if you can provide the outlook for FY25 and what is driving this higher uh, ETR for us? So, uh, what, uh, see, some of the units, you know, like uh, uh, biosimilar company and the uh, LIFAS, which is the pencil NG company, where we are incurring the OPEX loss, we are not taking the deferred tax credit, right? Once we start okay. a tax credit, uh, obviously it will fall down. And in terms of the year as a whole, we, with the LIFAS plan expected to do well by uh, fourth, third, and fourth quarter, etc. Probably we may come to a uh, more than a break-even scenario by which the tax rate and the tax credits will be taken and the tax rates will come down. Overall, I think we will be somewhere around 27, 28% is what my feeling at this particular point of time. 
Sure, sir. Uh, thank you for that. And one for uh, Yukandar, sir, on rev limit, we said that generic rev limit contribution this year would be 10 to 15 percent higher than last year. But this this time around, we will also have a full year impact of rev limit, right, uh, versus the half year impact uh, for last year. So shouldn't the contribution be, uh, you know, higher? No, no, frankly, like I never wanted to say anything about rev limit because we never said like we never announced what is the rev limit sales, whether it is last year or this year. I only just generally guided and it is uh, also like, as you know, Kunal, like it is about settlement periods. Some can have an overlapping effect on some other periods. So I think it is better to leave it there. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Rahu Rahunathan. Hi, Raghu. Uh, we request you to unmute and ask your question. Let's go to the next question, yeah. please. The next question is from Tarang Agarwal. Hi, uh, good morning. Am I audible? Yeah. Okay. A uh, couple of questions uh, on UJ and then on the US business. Uh, you know, over the last two years, how has your uh, market share moved in, in the US injectables business? Because there's been quite a lot of movement in the marketplace specifically. So just wanted to get a pulse on how the market share is moved, one. And second, uh, what's the dollar impact of revenue, uh, say, in Q1 because of uh, uh, the remediation activity happening in UJR3? Yeah, I, in uh, injectable business, mainly the specialty portion of uh, the US, it is uh, steady. I will not say like we had too much of growth because of in fact, last year I was expecting that we will move very well, but uh, UJ3 hit us in Q4. Uh, because of that, Q4 and it, the impact continued in Q1. So in general, I can say is it is stable. Obviously, we could not grow too much because of uh, UJ3 impact. And what's your second question, Tharan? Dollar impact uh, revenue uh, because yeah. of UJ3. Revenue, revenue impact, I told you like uh, last quarter, that is Q4 of FI24, we had a $20 million revenue impact. And the Q1, we had around similar uh, 50 to $20 million impact. Okay, and um, we hope uh, that's the end of it. Perfect, that's quite helpful. Uh, so now in the US, uh, Swami sir, is it possible for the OSG business to reach a $300 million quarterly run rate anytime soon? Uh, purely from uh, products perspective uh, in terms of market approvals and uh, from a capacity perspective on the, on the patent. Adharan, um, I will, I'll, I'll not give a specific number, but I can generally talk about it. Um, so the U.S. business, as you have seen, has been doing well. And then we have made major strides in building on our past success. And our business is right now demonstrating good, uh, very strong momentum. Um, and we found that our volume-based strategy with global capacity and the talent pool that we have has helped us to grow into this kind of uh, large generic company. Um, so th these are the basic factors and that factor remains and it get, really gets strengthened. We also have a number of uh, new launches. You know, last year we guided that we are going to have a few launches that uh, will be coming in. Uh, this year also we expect a good amount of launches, somewhat similar to last year. Uh, yeah. And we are getting products from the JV in China. Um, and we are also expecting commercialization sometime in the near future um, for the U.S. Um, oral solid. So overall, I feel uh, fairly optimistic, and uh, we believe that uh, 
three years oral solids will do well. Um, as far as the number is concerned, uh, we have made a good amount of um, uh, we had good amount of growth in the recent past, and if this continues, we should be close to that number or uh, you know achieve that number sometime soon. Sure. And uh, specifically on the OTC business for this quarter, saw some softness. Uh, is there? Is it just a quarterly aberration or uh, there's something happening there? Yeah. So OTC business um, was soft in this uh, Q1. There are a couple of reasons. One is that uh, seasonality. Definitely uh, this was not the season. And um, we we have, uh, despite that, it should have been better that I agree. But we are optimistic. We have some new awards that is going um, to start sometime this quarter. And I think that will get ramped up uh, sometime during the year. We believe that uh, we will see some progress in the OTC business going forward, at least from Q2. That is our expectation. And, uh, you know, we also have the OTC branded business um, that's uh, given a separate company. Uh, we have recently uh, had restructuring the last one year of the leadership team and we have got a new strategy. Um, we are very optimistic about the future of that business too. Overall, we think we will see better times for OTC going forward. Okay, just last two. Any update on Resnuta? I mean, how is that product shipping up? Yeah, Resnuta, unfortunately, there was some... Uh, problem with the CMO. Um, we were due to launch uh, in the Q2 of this year. Um, the problems are being resolved and I think there could be a delay and the launch would be probably in the last quarter of the current fiscal at this point of time. Okay. And the last question on Europe, uh, you know, uh, given that the business has achieved uh, almost a 900 million euro, 850 to 900 million euro run rate, and the margins have moved to mid-teen levels. Are there possibly more levers uh, in the business uh, uh, from a, from the point of view of margin expansion? Uh, or uh, just wanted to hear your thoughts there? Or we should expect it to remain at these levels now from your on. No, Tadan, thank you for this. Yeah, obviously, we expect to move upwards. Of, uh, of course, on the world solid business, uh, which is predominantly the contributor as of date for the European revenues, uh, we are trying to do our very best. But we are also, as uh, very clearly explained by Dr. Satakarni in his initial uh, elaboration, we are keenly looking at the launch of some of these biosimilars in the upcoming period. And that would uh, contribute to increasing the bidder margin substantially. Similarly, also we are looking at the Vizac plant of UGI to start feeding us, which will be enabling us to uh, participate better in the tenders, in the process, put up our revenues and margins. So the brighter period is ahead of us. We are keenly looking at it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. As this was our last question, I now, I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Thank you all for joining us on the call today. If you have any of your questions unanswered, please feel free to keep in touch with the investor relations team. The transcript of this call will be uploaded on our website www.arbindo.com in due course. Thank you and have a great day. On behalf of Aurobindo Pharma, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line and exit the webinar. Thank you.